All right, everyone, welcome back to the Key to Success podcast, where I'm your host, Terrell Key. And like I always say on this podcast, there are, there are plenty of places for you guys to find like all of the negative information that's going on in the world. And like there are great reasons that, you know, like to, to be concerned with those things. But on this podcast, that's not what we talk about. We talk about ideas, creativity, inspiration, and things like that. This is a happy place where we come to make change, right? So my next host is like one of the like the biggest spark plugs I've ever met. Like she's always bringing energy to meetings and things like that. So let me read a short bio uh, that she provided me. All right, so we have Sarah Kirk. She's a national board certified counselor uh, and a school counselor specialist at the Oklahoma State Department of Education. In this role, she is creating and implementing a statewide comprehensive school counseling framework. Sarah currently serves on the board of directors for ASCA. And she uh, and is currently pursuing a PhD in counselor education and supervision. Uh, she was a school counselor for eight years. In 2019, her school counselor program became recognized um, uh, by, by RAMP. She became RAMP certified. Sarah is all, uh, also Oklahoma's 2018 School Counselor of the Year. And in 2019, she became the National School Counselor, uh, National School Counselor of the Year finalist. Uh, Sarah is an advocate for the profession and is passionate about equity and access uh, to school counseling services. Uh, for all students. Sarah is awesome. So everybody, uh, this is Sarah. Sarah, how are you doing? I'm doing great. I am so happy to be on this podcast. I love all things positivity. So I am in the right place. You definitely are. You definitely are in the right place right now. Um, uh -oh, let me slide this up here. So, um, so tell us a little bit about yourself, Sarah, and what you have going on. I know I read a uh, short bio, but can you tell us a little bit about who you are? Yeah, so about a year ago, I left the school counseling profession at the school level, and I'm now, I like to consider myself a school counselor leader at the Oklahoma State Department of Education. My two big roles are leading and advocating, so that is what I spend my time doing. Um, as you read, we are writing and publishing a brand new framework for comprehensive school counseling to support all school counselors. And then I'm also in charge of helping train, coach, provide technical assistance, all of that for the almost 2000 school counselors across the great state of Oklahoma. So we've got a lot of things going on. My favorite saying is it is a, an exciting time to be a school counselor in Oklahoma because we have a lot of really great developments happening to support our school counselors, which of course in turn supports our students. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. Can you tell us a little bit of, uh, really quickly about that SEAL program that you just launched today? That is so cool. Yeah, so in Oklahoma, we saw that we had a need and that need really revolved around that we, well, we have a school counselor shortage, so we've got to get more people into the field, which we're working on, but also a lot of the people that are entering the field right now are coming to us um, without the extensive training that, that a lot of school counselors have. So they're either emergency certified, meaning they're still in their graduate program, or they're alternatively certified, meaning they're coming from the mental health or social work fields. And those people can really be assets to our school counseling programs and really strong assets to students, but we know they're missing that school counseling training. And so the SEAL program that ASCA is piloting in Oklahoma is specifically for those, those people who are brand new into the field and not coming from a school counseling graduate school background to give them the knowledge they need in order to create comprehensive school counseling programs for their students. That's awesome. Like you guys are so proactive, like getting after it, like you saw a need, you filled it, and then you're ensuring that they're doing the best things for students and following the national model. That is awesome. So, so like Sarah, like, so you do all of yep, this. Incredible, absolutely. Yeah. You, you're doing all of this incredible work, like all over the country, like you're representing the whole country, like all the school counselors, like you're incredible. So like, what are your whys? What motivates you to keep going and keep doing all this stuff, attend all these meetings, do all of this, this work? Like what, what is driving you? Well, my why always has to be about the students. Of course, that's why we do this work. Of course, now in this role, I'm a little more removed from the students, but it doesn't mean that the students aren't still my why. Mm -hmm. I just now see that as a school counselor leader, I can really help train and support school counselors so that it 
trickles down to the students, which is the why. I truly believe in school counseling. I believe in the work of school counselors. And I am very passionate about all students being served by a comprehensive school counseling program. I don't think it's fair that some students can go to Mr. Key's school and get awesome support or Miss Kirk's school and get awesome support, but then down the road that may not be happening. Mm -hmm. And that's just, it's not equitable, it's not ethical, it's not right. And so my why is, is those students who don't have that and what we can do to get that in place and how we can make sure all students are served by comprehensive school counseling. And you're you're actually out there making it happen. Like, and that's the cool thing about it. It's not just lip service, like you're doing it every single day. So question. All right. So like like you're doing all this incredible stuff now. Like one of the things that like kind of interests me, like when I'm talking to all these amazing leaders, school counselor leaders, like all of it, right? Is how you've grown because some people like when they start off in their career, they think that they can't a- achieve all of these great things, but they can. Um, can you tell us a little bit how you've grown over like the course of your time as an educator? Oh man, <laughs> every way I think, you know, when I think back to when I started in education about a decade ago, um, I, I had big dreams. I had high expectations. I've always had that type of personality. I had those high expectations for myself, for my school, for my students. And I've always expected to make a positive difference. I've always wanted to use my leadership and advocacy to create better learning environments for our students. But I think what I've really learned to do and where I've grown is in my um, ability to lead so that others will follow. You know, I think about the, the Ruth Bader Ginsburg quote about fighting for things you care about, but do it in a way so others will join you. And that's something I didn't always understand or always know. Um, so I've learned to to give grace and accept people's differences and welcome them at the table. That's what makes us able to make real systemic change and and listen, listen to other people. I don't have all the answers. I might have some and I might have something to bring to the table, but it takes all of us coming together to really to really make the change we want we want to make. And I think um, I guess I'm a big quotes person. I um, I think about uh, John Lewis's quote also when we think about you know being being good and necessary troublemakers and mm-hmm. I I've always been loud and outspoken about my beliefs but doing it so that it is the type that um, the causing the type of trouble that makes a significant positive impact for those around us especially our students. Yeah, one of the common things that I've seen like from like the leaders that I've interviewed is like leadership is more so about pouring into others than it is really about like you actually like functionally telling everybody what to do. Like, you know, and I think some yes. people, like some leaders stumble there, like, because they think it's all about like them and they're like, I hate to say self-centered, but like they're really, really at the center of their work. But for like us and a lot of other people, it's really about the children and like supporting the people that actually impact the children. You know what I mean? Absolutely. It's so, like, an awesome, uh, like just an awesome point by you that I really, really like. Um, so like now, like you're leading, like, you know, on the ASCA board, like you're leading in Oklahoma. Like, did anyone, ever, like, did anyone in particular give you like that first push towards leadership? Yeah, for sure. Oh, I've had many people believe in me and push me. But I think the the person who really gave me that first opportunity in education was the first principal I worked for. I was so fortunate to have a leader who automatic automatically saw that potential in me, even, you know, when I was 22 and brand new in the profession and maybe didn't see all of my own potential. Um, but she did. And and really what you were just saying is what she was so good at. She she didn't just talk the talk. You know, she put me in in situations to allow me to lead and to allow me to grow. And I think she went so far beyond just believing in me. She trusted me to to have real strong responsibilities in our school right from the start, you know, leading committees and leading initiatives and things like that. So 
I think she really showed me that a strong leader not only believes in young people, but gives them those opportunities to grow and to succeed and to stumble, you know, it's yeah. okay. That's part of it. Um, so yeah, Dr. Connery was definitely my, one of my big um, encouragers and, and certainly a huge part of where I am today is because of her belief and her leadership. Yeah, Dr. Connery is very smart. I can tell you that. I mean, like one of the things that I noticed about <laughs> all of the Ask a Board members, you guys all have this star quality. Like it just draws people into you guys. It's so cool. And it and it works like, you know, like just thinking about like how like all of the like association members, they want to talk to you guys. So like, I mean, it's, it's incredible. Like just to kind of watch it happen and all of you guys just have this quality, like this unique quality. Like whether it's Crystal, like all of you guys, like it's just the, like the same thing. <laughs> like, I don't know what that is. Well, you thank guys. you. <laughs> We're just normal people. We're just school counselors. I think school that's what school rock counselors star, are. <laughs> rock star school counselors. That's what you're <laughs> like, you're different. Um, so another question, like, so, you know, like we're also change makers. We're going around, we're changing things around the country. Like we're not just going with the status quo. So if there was one thing you could just snap your fingers and change in education, what would it be right now? Oh gosh, where do you start, right? <laughs> There's so much that, that could use um, some shifting. I think for me overall, I just go back to wanting all students to have that equitable access to a really strong education in a school that's welcoming, in a school that's accountable and safe and that just provides that that environment and that community to not only learn you know the academics is so important but also just to flourish and to grow and to explore and all of those things i think we really limit ourselves in education sometimes and i just wish that all students had that type of learning environment again like i said that that i know mr key has in his school and that I know Miss Kirk's going to have in her school, but but I just wish we could improve education so that that is widespread and without a doubt happening. I think my other big wish would be, and these all kind of tie together, but I think that if I had a magic wand, I would want all educators to have a really strong understanding of how important their role is in students' lives. I think they get it, oftentimes they get it, but that positive relationship is so important. And, you know, we hear people talk about it all the time, whether it's celebrities or athletes, you know, talking about that one teacher who made a difference. And if I had the ability to empower every educator to strive to be that one person every day, I just think our world would look so much different because our students would leave the K-12 system feeling like someone believes in them and hopefully even more than one someone, you know, a whole mm -hmm. bunch of someones and and our students deserve that and they need that. And I think every kid, like, so I was talking to a kid today, like, and I think he's really misunderstood. So like he has some trouble at school, but like you should see his face light up when I tell him like, man, I actually like you, man. I like having you here. I like when you come down to see me. You know what I mean? And like he's yes. gradually starting to change. Like every child deserves to hear that, that I want you here. Like I like you. Like every child deserves it. You know what I mean? So I, man, that is a really, really great thing. Um, yes. So, yeah, sorry. Mm -hmm. But um, so like, so what are some of the things that you have coming up next? I know you have SEAL going on. Like, I mean, you're probably doing all kinds of things for like the board and things like that. Like, do you have anything uh, coming up that you would like to promote? Oh boy, um, we have a lot of things happening. Like I said, it's an exciting time to be a school counselor in Oklahoma. We are about to publish our comprehensive school counseling framework. It should be published really any day now. Hopefully by the time this podcast comes out, our framework is published. <laughs> that would be a good goal. Um, other things on the horizon. Oh man, what else can I say? Um, I'm in a PhD program, so we I'm you know hoping to get that done in the next. Now, you know, and personally, I'm getting married in a month, so that's exciting. Congratulations! And can't help but 
<laughs> yeah. You have a lot so, going on. So yeah, professionally and personally, there's a lot going on. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> so, so I have two more questions left for you. So um, where, uh, first off, where can people follow you like on social media, like, you know, to learn more about you? Yeah, I am Counselor Kirk on social media. I think on Instagram, it has a little line between it. Um, and then on Twitter, it's just Counselor Kirk. And I love me some social media. So be sure and give me a follow. Um, yeah, find me there. I'll also link to my email and all my social media. I believe in sharing resources and ideas. And that's why I love school counseling social media so you can find me at counselor kirk even after i get married i will proudly still be counselor kirk it's it's too good <laughs> you have a really good website too like you know that people oh, yeah. check out mm -hmm. yep i have i do have a website that i share a lot of resources and things like that that is um, anything like that nice so the last question so this is the the like the the big question right so if you were talking to like a new school counselor like just like a, a younger sarah 22 year old sarah and they asked you what are your keys to success what would they be Ooh, i love that play on word mm -hmm. um my keys to success oh relationship has to be at the heart of all we do I think that if we remember that, we are sure to be successful. So I think my number one key to success is, is just that relationship has to be at the heart of everything we do. Absolutely. I told our um, our like our newest school counselor that she was having a hard day. I said, hey, look, the most important thing that you can do is care about our students. Like start yep. that. Like if you do that, like we're we're good to go. Like, you know, like we could we could work on all the other things, but make sure that you just care yep. continue to care about our kids. So, Sarah, I can't thank you enough it's for your so time true. this evening. Yep. I can seriously can't thank you enough. Um, and to everyone listening, make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Uh, we're going to continue to have amazing guests. Maybe not as amazing as Sarah, but we'll have amazing <laughs> guests like over the weeks to come. So thank you again, Sarah. You are welcome. Thank you for having me. This was so much fun. Yep. Thank you.